Everyone done with your Christmas shopping? If you're not, don't admit it. I don't want to incriminate you, but uh, yeah. That's some ideas. Um, in case you're still uh, wondering, I can give you some of these are the best of the gifts that I have cherished over the years. A few years ago, uh, Olivia worked with a custom pen maker and made, made a pen for me. It takes Esterbrook uh, cart uh, nibs, in case you grew up using a fountain pen, you might recognize that. And uh, I keep this on my desk and think of her whenever I use it. She uh, put a lot of time into that. Another gift, uh, if you've been in my office, you know that I have many, many books. And this is not a book that would catch your eye. It's one more brown book among many, many brown books. But this is the book that uh, my father gave me a while ago back in 2002, to be exact. And uh, it's an amazing gift to me for the words that came with it as well. You have become exactly what we hope for in a son, a good man. Keep your commitments, but don't give them too easily. You are your reputation. Build it carefully on trust and generosity. And I hope I have done that. That will go back to its place of honor on my shelf. Another gift, this came yesterday, and this is marvelous. This is my Aunt Heidi's toffee. It only comes once a year. It is thick toffee put with, mixed with nuts and poured over chocolate chips, and I do not have enough to share with you, and I am sorry. This is all that I get this year. <laughs> And I'm going to go home and I'm going to have a, a bite of it. I'm going to eat it very slowly with a very good cup of coffee after I enjoy the other gift that I cherish yearly. Uh, my Uncle Mike sends, uh, he's out by Boston, he sends seafood every year. And so my family, we're going to have a seafood dinner tonight, fresh seafood. And I got to tell you, it is, uh, this might not be healthy, but I take great joy in getting live lobsters out and we put them on the floor and you have a lobster race. They don't go very fast. <laughs> And the winner of the lobster race is the first in the pot. <laughs> oh, it's so tasty. <laughs> to give well is central to Christmas, right? That's part of the Christmas moment. Is it's rooted, uh, and to give well, to give well is root, it, the the key to giving well is rooted in the name of the first gift, right? The, what's the first gift of Christmas? The, we we shall call him Emmanuel, and uh, the name itself tells us what the key to the giving is, because the name Emmanuel uh, in, in Hebrew they do like modern German, they shove words together to create a bigger word, and so Emmanuel is actually three words: M with and you us L God, and so it's not even it's the first. It's the first word of the first compound word of the name of, of the first gift. So the first gift starts with with. A great Christmas gift has a sense of with in it. It's rooted in that uh, relationship. And if you think about the giving of the first gift, Christ with us, that's not necessarily what God had to do. God could have given another set of tablets, put the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount on another set of tablets and say, here, read these for a few thousand years, go for it. Right? Or I mean, God could have like, just written the Sermon on the Mount in the clouds like the divine screensaver, like rotate through, and like the next day, oh, it must be Tuesday, it looks like Matthew 6. We could have had something like that, but that's not what God did. God sent Jesus to be with us. The first gift of Christmas is at one point, at one specific time, the Father sent the Son, who voluntarily relinquished all power and authority, humbling himself, taking on the form of a servant, to give himself for others. And he did this to be with us. That's the relational part. And it's in a specific time, a specific place. It's not something abstract. It's something very material, touchable, tangible. And that is, to me, what makes a, gr a gift great, is, is they reflect this sense of with, the, the sense that a gift shows a bit of who the, the giver is, and also the, the character and the, of the person who, who receives it. They're the cares and concerns and passions and the skills and the talents of, of each. Like the Christmas gift starts with, with, with this, uh, this, Christmas starts with the giving of a gift, and, and God knows us and knows what we need to be with us in our lives. And, and so how do we give in that? that same way. The, the gift of a book matters to me not because I needed another copy of ancient uh, wisdom literature. Everything in this book is public, 
definitively public domain. And I can find all of it online, ccl.org. I know where to find it all. That's not what matters. What matters is my father, to, to pick this up, I know my dad was looking for this when he was in a bookstore, and I believe in Atlanta, right? Yeah. And so this, is, uh, this tells me something about what my dad is thinking about as he's walking through a bookstore. There's a withedness of this. It tells you something about my family. Eh? You, you just learned a lot about my family, didn't you? What are my big gifts? Books, pens, and food. Right? That's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and the other gifts, like the gift of the toffee, matters so much to me because th that's what my family does. We get together and cook. And, and so for my aunt to send me a bit of, of her food, she's the baker in the family. She is phenomenal at what she bakes. And, and, uh, and to, to send a gift of that is just uh, amazing. Every year, uh, she sends uh, two, two gifts. She gives, sends the toffee and the expectation of, of the toffee as well. Hey, one gift I never saw coming, the other I can't wait for every year. There, we have about a week left before Christmas, and so there are still, like, still time to think about how we might give. I, I hear of ideas. Um, I know of one, fa one person um, wanted to give a gift to a beloved friend, and so she got a, a leather-bound book and went around to the friend's employee, uh, and the, her friends, and, and pastor, and, and, and family, and, and gathered... Ask them a question. T tell me a story of the giftedness of this person. Why is this person so special to you? And she has this book filled out with all the ways that this, her friend is wonderful and um, how she has been a blessing to others. And so she gives it to her on Christmas Day, and they open it. And, and like, what an amazing thing. They, they open this, she opens this book of the memories of, and the stories of everyone who, who loves her so dearly. And like Christmas just stops for an hour. Or, or maybe Christmas just starts for an hour, I don't know. But they just read this book for an hour together, just reading it out loud to share the stories. Like gifts like this, um, to someone who moved away, go run down to Dollar General, get six tea bags, write a date on every tea bag, and set, put them in an envelope and send them off. And on those dates, that person can brew that tea knowing that you're going to call at nine so you can catch up with them. Right? Or do it with coffee, if that's more their bag. Uh, give the gift card to Barnes and & Nobles and say, you buy two books, and we'll read them together. And we'll get together and talk about it and, and look forward to that. Give, give a gift card to Red Lobster so people can eat together and maybe take us to a Mizzou game, if that's your bag. Right? Buy a glove to be able to play ball with a child or grandchild. Uh, get a big old box just to play. Make a fort with, with, with your kids or grandkids. And, I've read of uh, folks, uh, one, a daughter was going to college, so a dad bought them both journals so they could record their, their, their first year apart and they could exchange that a after a year. Uh, get a cook Wouldn't it be great to get a cookbook to cook together? Uh, that, that to me sounds awesome, right? Get, get a cookbook and dog ear five pages and we're going to make those. Oh, that'd be great. Right. Give, give a couple a meal. I, I know you're busy. Let me bring you a meal or let me watch your kids so you can go and have downtime. Take a trip together to be with each other. These, these gifts are not hard. I don't think anything I've said is all that expensive, but it gives the, uh, it's relational. What's the width that you can give with your, your family, with your friends? Now, there are challenges to this. So the running theme of this whole month, you might have noticed, is that to celebrate Christmas well, you have to talk with your family about how you're going to celebrate Christmas. You've got to sit down and chat. Like, how are we going to handle this? Like, Olivia does not make me a custom pen every year. Like, I have this. I cherish it. It is wonderful. I, it has a place of honor on my desk, and, uh, and I use it. But she doesn't make me one of these every year. And there are some years, like, you just nail it. You just, like, capture something amazing and powerful. And some years, you know, you know I don't know what to do. <laughs> Aren't those wonderful years? And um, to, to say, you know, some years it's going to be amazing, and some years we're... Well, what, how do I give in a way that, that makes sense? Like, I, I've told Olivia... Um, a tea, a sauce, and an ink. G give me something to think of you with as I cook, or as I write, or as I uh, eat. And, and that's great. That's all. I, I mean, give me that. It'd be wonderful. Uh, but like, what happens? And what happens when you have something amazing, and, and the other person doesn't? Like, to, to be able to give and to be accept, be able to accept graciously. Can you imagine being the woman who uh, received that leather-bound stories of all the way that her friends love her and cherish her, and, and then like? 
it would, you would have to have talked ahead of time, like, we're going to be gracious with each other because whatever she gave to the friend who gave her the leather-bound journal of all the ways she has loved was not going to be equal to that because, man, how do, you, how do you match that? And that's okay, right? That, that's okay. You, to be able to discuss, you know, we're not going to get guilty about how we give to each other. If I give more or less, that the, the proper way to accept a gift is to say thank you and, and let it be, right? To allow it to vary. To, I mean, and there's challenges. What do you do about when you, the family or the friends or, or the, that you don't know as well? Like, how do you to send a, a gift card or, or, or cash, how, how do you get, give in a way that builds relationship? Like if there's a random nephew that you really would love to get to know more, how do you give to them in a way that actually says, like, how do we create something where we can actually talk? Like, why don't I, instead of buying you this, why don't I, why don't you tell me what you want to listen to and what I want to listen to and maybe we exchange music or something, just so you create deep in a relationship it, through the giving of gifts. But, but it all takes discussion amongst your family. How are we going to give so that we are giving with each other relationally. Christmas is inherently material. It, it is. I mean, there, there's no way. I mean, that we can avoid that. Jesus had a baby. Yes, Lord. Jesus has a baby. We, we can't get away from that. Jesus had a. It, or Mary had a baby, and it's Jesus, and it's not like some ephemer, ephemeral, like, oh, Jesus was born. No, Jesus was born. He's crying. Joseph, can you pick him up? I'm kind of tired. Like Jesus was a material person, and there's nothing to remind you of the material nature of life, life like a newborn. Right? They very straightforward. Their needs. You, you you're reminded of it all the time. And so I don't think we're ever going to get away from Christmas being materialistic. The challenge is not to make Christmas non-materialistic. It's to use the material to give in a way that builds the relationship. Right? That, that's I think, is important. God created this good and beautiful material world, and we are called to share it with each other as God shares it with us. And so I would invite you to go home not right this second, but when you go home, uh, make a list of how you're giving this year and how you might give in the future and how might we give to each other in a way that is relational? How do we give in a way that has that with to it, that, that, that just connects to who I am and who they are and, and just brings that joy of being in a relationship to each other? It's a season to give, but not just to give anything, but to give as God gave. God with us. Amen.